Hi, it's Ryan Frank, and welcome to the YouTube version of my podcast. I'm so glad that you've tuned in. I am a pastor, an entrepreneur. I love talking about faith, family, and anything to do with leadership and productivity. So every week in my podcast, I talk to you about hacks that'll help you be a better leader. I share with you things that God is teaching me right now. I talk to you about what's going on in our family and in our businesses. I share with you resources and products and ideas you absolutely need to know about. And then I wrap up every week by talking about a quote. I'm a bit of a quote nerd, and so I love sharing good quotes with you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, let's start today's episode. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Frank, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm so excited about the new format of the Ryan Frank podcast. So if you missed my podcast last week, please go back and listen to it sometime. I think it'll uh, add some value to your life. And I also, in the last podcast, talked about the new format of the Ryan Frank podcast. So the podcast has been silent for several months, probably six months. I've not been silent. I'm continuing to create content every day. But the podcast's been silent. So I was trying to think through what's a new updated version of the Ryan Frank podcast look like. What I've decided to do, launched it last week. This is the second episode of this new updated Ryan Frank podcast. I've decided to split the podcast into five parts. By the way, your feedback has meant the world to me. It's gold to me. Thank you. I've heard from so many of you saying, Ryan, love the new format. Ryan, uh, the podcast really helped me this week. Love what you said about that. So thank you for those words of encouragement. I've decided to split every podcast into five parts or five sections. The first part is I always want to lead off by sharing some kind of a leadership or productivity hack with you. So something to help you grow as a leader. Second part of the podcast, I want to talk to you about what God is teaching me right now. Because in my walk with the Lord, I don't want to just keep everything that God is giving me and showing me. I want to share it with you and let that flow out to you. Then third, I want to talk to you about the latest and greatest. What am I working on right now? What's going on uh, with the companies and the organizations that we lead? Hope that you'll find that interesting and inspirational and a help. And then fourth, I want to talk to you about a resource that you must know about. So it might be a website, an app, a book I just read. It might be a place that we've gone to visit, something I've found on Amazon. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to change week to week. So last week I talked to you about new way I'm managing my email on my phone and on my laptop, on my computer. This week I'm going to talk to you about a website that has some really cool deals that you, I think you need to know about because we absolutely love it. And then finally I want to share with you a quote of the week to wrap up the podcast. So here we are. Thank you again so much for tuning in today. If you aren't subscribed to the podcast, just push that subscribe button. That way, every week when we release a new episode, you'll be notified. All right, are you ready to jump in? Here we go. Okay, 2021 is coming to a close. And I want to talk to you today about how to finish the year strong. As we record this podcast, we are a little over a week away from Christmas, uh, you know, two weeks or so from a brand new year. There is still time to end the year strong. You probably have heard the saying before, it's not how you start, but it's how you finish. And so I want you to pause right now, think through how many days do I have left in the year, and what can I do to finish strong. You know, the Greeks had a race in their Olympic games that were very unique. The winner wasn't the one who finished first. Instead, the winner was the runner who finished with his torch still lit. And as we move toward the end of the year, I think right now is a great time for everyone is to evaluate how are we finishing the year? Because listen, it's not just about finishing the race first. It's I want that uh, torch to still be lit. I want you to end well. Now, you may feel like my torch is gone or it's just a little bit of a flicker. And that's okay because here's the thing. You can add some fire to that torch and you can end 
the year strong. Are you ready? I'm going to share with you today seven ways to end the year strong. Number one, give yourself permission to slow down. Now, that seems a little counterintuitive. I'm talking to you about finishing strong and in the same breath telling you to slow down a little bit. You've heard the old proverb, all work and no play makes Jack a doll boy, right? If there's ever a time where I hope that you'll take permission, give yourself permission to slow down, it's right now. Leaders who finish strong understand that there does need to be some kind of a work-life balance. Now, I know there are opinions all over the map on work-life balance. Some people say it's very hypothetical. There is, and some people say there's no way that you can ever have a life work balance. It's all the same thing. Other people would say you absolutely need to draw lines in the sand and have balance. Here's where I'm at. I know you've got to have capacity in your life for the things that are important to you. And let me remind you today that the most important things to you shouldn't be things. They're people. And you've got to slow down, right? And you've got to make sure that you have time for the ones that are the most important to you. If you're a leader who is burning the candle at both ends with no balance in your life, especially as it relates to rest and recreation and time with your family, here's the thing, you're really going to be of no value to anybody. So if there's a great time of the year to give yourself permission to slow down, it's right now. Because if you slow down, you enjoy friends, enjoy family, enjoy a little bit of rest. You're going to be set to begin 2022 like never before. You'll probably even be two or three steps ahead of everybody else. Number two, don't lose your focus. Now, yes, I want you to slow down. I want you to spend some time with friends and family. But what I don't want is I don't want you to lose your focus. There, you do have goals, right, that you have set. Stay working toward getting those goals done. You do have tasks that you need to complete. Continue working on completing those tasks. You have projects that you need to keep moving forward. Keep those projects moving forward. So as great as the parties are and the lights and the gift exchanges, and the food, and everything that we all get to enjoy in the holidays, don't lose your focus. You wanna keep those balls moving forward. You don't want to lose momentum, especially during a time when things just seem to get crazy like they do right now. So number one, give yourself permission to slow down. Number two, don't lose your focus. Number three, show your team that you appreciate them. Show them that you appreciate them. I talked to you about this in the last podcast, and that is having a people plan. As leaders, we talk a lot about having a strategic plan, but do we really talk about having a people plan? Do we talk about having a plan for our people that really should connect and tie into our strategic plan? Now, showing your team you appreciate them doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Yeah, if you can throw a Christmas party, that's great. If you want to buy everybody a gift, that's wonderful. But it can be as simple as a thank you card, a personal letter, looking someone in the eye and letting them know that you appreciate them. Now, I know that you do appreciate your team, but are you expressing that gratitude and are you expressing that appreciation to your team? Because in one sense, unexpressed gratitude is a lack of gratitude. You need to let your people know that you appreciate them. And, and you know, if there's ever a time to do that, I know you can express that appreciation on their work anniversaries and their birthdays, but Christmas, a time when people are slowing down and thinking about the things that are most important to them, it's a great time for you to let your team know that they matter. Number four, declutter your environment. Now we're talking about ending the year strong. This is a great way to end the year strong. And that is declutter your space. What do I mean by environment? I mean several things. 
Let's talk about decluttering your mind, right? And making sure that you, in the year where, you, where I'm thinking straight and things are organized. And, and here's the thing though, if you wanna declutter your mind, one of the keys to decluttering your mind is just getting your workspace organized. If you've absorbed much of my content, you've heard me say that a tidy desk equals a tidy mind. Now, I know some people are more organized than others. And some people are more of a neat freak than others. But whether you were born organized or not, it's a skill that you can learn. And if you have a cluttered workspace, if your desk is cluttered and you have piles all over the place, I promise you that it is affecting your productivity because our eyes wander, right? And we look here and look here and look here. I teach leaders to, at the end of every workday, declutter your workspace, put things in file folders and put them in a drawer right? So that you start every day with a fresh, clean workspace. It really will help you be more productive. Maybe you could just carve a couple hours out between now and the end of the calendar year or half a day to organize your office, to organize and clean out your desk drawers, right? To, to straighten up your cubicle, uh, whatever this looks like for you to declutter, to declutter, let me mention this as we talk about decluttering. What about decluttering your to-do list? Now, one of these days, I need to come back on the podcast and talk to you about my productivity playbook. It's a great way to help you stay organized and get organized. Maybe I'll talk about that uh, in an upcoming podcast in the next week or two. But here's what I want you to hear from me today. In fact, let's just plan on that. Next week, I'll talk to you about my productivity playbook because it is a great resource and tool for you to put into effect, maybe if you don't use it, even beginning in 2022. But you need to declutter your to-do list, organize that to-do list. If you have a couple things on your to-do list that have been on there for weeks and weeks and weeks, you need to get them done. And just, you, you know what it's like when you have something on your calendar, on your to-do list, it's like a monkey on your back and it just won't go away. Think how good you'll feel getting it done. Um, if you can just, if you'll be able to start your new year w without those things waiting for you, right? Uh, start the new year fresh and ready. We'll talk more about uh, getting that one thing done when we get to number seven. Number one, give yourself permission to slow down. Number two, don't lose your focus. Number three, show your team that you appreciate them. Number four, declutter your environment. That'll help you end the year strong. Number five, spend some time with your supervisor. If you have a direct report or a supervisor, uh, if you serve a board, maybe it's the chairman of your board, uh, spend some time with your supervisor. Start by expressing your gratitude to him or her. Maybe you, hey, can I have 30 minutes of your time? I know it's crazy, everybody's busy, but if I can get 30 minutes and buy him or her a cup of coffee and just start by specifically saying what you're grateful for. Hey, thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve in this company. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve in this organization. Thank you for the trust that you've given me. Thank you for the budget that you've given me. Thank you for giving me that additional headcount or two. Thank you for empowering me. Thank you for not, mul for, for not micromanaging me, but for empowering me to do what needs to be done. Show gratitude. I would ask your supervisor, hey, what do you feel has gone well in your perspective this year, in my ministry, in my department? What are some things that you feel really good about? And then what's something you feel like I could do better as a leader going into the next year? Is there an area where I could grow, where I could, how I could serve you better, how I could serve this organization better? That'll make a huge, huge difference. First of all, it'll mean something pretty significant to your leader that you're reaching out to them saying, I wanna end the year strong so that I can begin the new year even stronger. And if I could get 30 minutes of your time and just take that feedback like start by lead with gratitude, but then take that feedback and take it to heart. Don't get defensive, right? Don't, don't build walls. Well, 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 well. Drop, don't, 
no excuses. You honestly want the feedback of your leader. Remember that feedback is the breakfast of champions. And the more you ask for feedback from your supervisor, from your team, from the people that report to you, the, 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 the better you are at receiving feedback, the more capacity you're going to have for what God has for you. Here's number six. Two more ways to end the year strong. Number six, celebrate the victories from 2021. Celebrate the victories from 2021. I would encourage you to literally make a list of your goals and your accomplishments from this past year. Now, it's easy to focus on the negatives. It's easy to focus on the things that I didn't get done. I didn't lose the weight that I wanted to lose. I didn't exercise like I wanted to exercise, right? I didn't um, launch the product that I wanted to launch. We didn't meet our budget in this area. You, and you can focus on those negative things, but don't try not to focus on them. Instead, focus. let's find something to celebrate. There's always something to celebrate if you'll look for it. Record those successes. It's okay to record some of the failures because you learn from those failures. You, you fail forward, as John Maxwell says, right? So I, I, I learn from those failures and I record them so that I don't repeat them, so that I learn from them. Record the lessons that you learned. Record the, the, the launches that went well, the objectives and the projects that were finished and executed well. And, and record what you learned along the way. There's something about literally recording that stuff year over year that really will help you be a, a better leader and, and it'll set you off to have a better year. All right, let's go to number seven. Get that one thing done. Now, I hinted at this a minute ago when I was talking about number four. But you know what I'm talking about by that one thing. We all have that one thing, that one project, right? That one assignment, that one task that just seems to never get done. Choose to get it done. If you're listening to this before Christmas and you can get it done before Christmas, consider it an early Christmas present to yourself, right? So it will either be a relief now that I got it done, or it'll be something that I dread in January. And I promise you, promise you, promise you, you'll be so glad that you got it done if in January and it's just off your plate. You'll be able to enjoy Christmas break more if you get that one thing done. And only you know what that one thing is. It's probably been something that's been on your to-do list for some time. Just do everything that you can to get it done. Let me review these seven ways that you can end the year strong. Number one, give yourself permission to slow down. Number two, don't lose your focus. Number three, show your team that you appreciate them. Number four, declutter your environment. Five, spend time with your pastor or your supervisor, your leader. Number six, celebrate the victories from 2021. Number seven, get that one thing done. Remember, it's not about finishing the race first for the Greeks that mattered. It was about finishing with your torch still lit. And I don't want you to finish 2021 all burned out and defeated. I want you to end the year strong so that you'll begin 2022 strong. Here's the thing, you're all gonna fin we're all gonna finish this year unless we die, right? Or Jesus comes back. So why not end the year strong? What action steps do you need to take? It's not too late. Finish the year strong. Let's be ready to tackle a new year with a renewed sense of passion and purpose. Ryan, what's God teaching you right now? Great question. I am so glad that you asked. Thank you for asking. Here's one thing I know. I know that we all battle loneliness at times, some more than others, and some during different seasons than others. And if there's anything that God is teaching me right now, I just shared it with my church yesterday. And it's this, don't waste your loneliness. Don't waste that loneliness. 
Now, maybe you're not going through a lonely season right now. If you're not right now, I promise you will at some point because we all do. I read a story recently about a man who wanted to join one of those lonely heart clubs. So he sent his picture. They sent it back a few days later with a note that said, eh, we're good. We're not really that lonely right now. Uh, whether you are experiencing loneliness right now, and I know loneliness can hit hard for some in, in the holidays like this, whether you're experiencing it right now or not, I want you to know this, that God doesn't want you to waste your loneliness. We live in a culture that in one sense really creates loneliness. I mean, if you stop and think about it, we're so non-personal. You go to the bank and you're a number, right? You go to the store and you're a credit card, right? We, we don't tell people we'll call you on that. We say, well, we're good. I'm not, I, you don't need to call me. Text me, right? Our friends are on Facebook, right? They're not, they're not people that we eat lunch with. They're Facebook friends. It, some of you are old enough to remember when they used to build houses with big front porches because neighbors would actually gather on front porches and talk. And now, now when you build a house, it's the opposite. They don't build front porches. If they do, they're tiny. And you build a big back porch, right? A big back deck with a privacy fence around it. And back in the day when there were big front porches, they also had detached garages. Now they're attached garages. So you pull in your driveway after work, you click the opener on your visor, you pull into your garage. You don't even have to walk outside. You don't have to see anybody. You walk right into your house. And then when you're ready to go outside, you go to the back deck that's surrounded with a privacy fence and you never have to talk to anybody. We are world kind of, we're just non-personal and, and it fosters loneliness. Sometimes your job can create loneliness, especially if you're a leader. If you're anything like me, you've grown to respect the work of Peter Drucker, who has so much to say, had so much to say back in his time about management and I, I've absorbed, or I, I just have loved absorbing his content over the years. Back in the day, Peter Drucker said that the four hardest jobs in the, in the country were being the president of the United States, being the president of a university, being uh, the chairman of a hospital, and being a pastor at a church. Why? Because if you're one of those four people, one of those four types, people are always coming to you for help, but you don't really have anywhere else to go, anybody to go to for help. And a lot of times when you lead a company or you lead an organization, it can be lonely at the top, right? And you're giving and you sacrifice your family and you sacrifice your free time and you live in a glass house and that can be lonely. Suffering can also cause loneliness. Some of you, maybe this past calendar year, your husband or wife left you for someone else or you lost someone very close to you uh, to COVID or cancer. Maybe you feel like, maybe you're sick right now and you don't feel like anybody really understands what it is that you're going through. And you just are at a lonely season. Suffering can cause loneliness. You know, as, you, as I think about the Bible, if there's anybody in the Bible that suffered other than Jesus, it was Job, right? In one day, Job lost his family. He lost his kids. He lost his possessions, his wealth. Uh, he lost the love of his wife. He lost his own health. He lost, I think I've said he lost his possessions and all of his stuff. He lost the companionship of his friends. But there's one thing he didn't lose. He didn't lose his faith in God. He chose, he was not going to lose or not going to waste his loneliness. I don't want you to waste your loneliness. If you're going through a lonely season, I hope that this encourages you. Or maybe you can share this with someone who's going through a lonely season. Uh, you need to, first and foremost, just choose, I'm going to take care of myself. You know, one of the super saints of the New Testament was the Apostle Paul. And he wrote a majority of the New Testament. He started churches. And you, when you get to the book of 2 Timothy, it's the last letter that Paul wrote. You get to chapter 4, it's the very last words that Paul wrote. And Paul didn't write these words from a plush church office somewhere. 
He didn't write these words looking out on the Mediterranean Sea at a picnic table with the wind hitting his face. He's in a cold, damp prison. He's facing execution. And you know what Paul said? Paul said in 2 Timothy 4.13, he wrote to Timothy, When you come, bring the coat that I left in Troas and also bring my books and especially my papers. He chose it. He wasn't going to waste his loneliness. And he, first thing he said, bring my coat. He was going to take care of himself. Those prisons back in the day were cold and damp. Winter was coming and he wanted to take care of himself. Now, one thing I know about us as people, when you get discouraged, when you get down in the dumps, when you get defeated, one of the, one of the first things to go is take care of yourself. You, don't, you start not eating right, exer you don't exercise right, um, you don't sleep right. If you're in a lonely season of life, don't waste that loneliness. Take care of yourself. Paul went on to say, when you come, don't just bring my coat, but bring my book, my books and my papers. He wanted to make the most of his time. He wanted to make the most of his time. Now, Paul was a people person. He loved being around people. So here he is. He's in this quiet prison. He said the only person that was with him was Luke. So he's all by himself with Luke. He could have got down in the dumps. He could have started feeling sorry for himself. But instead, he decided he's going to make the most of his time. He was not going to waste his loneliness. You know, Paul, I, I mentioned a minute ago, wrote a majority of the New Testament. And he, he, he told Timothy, send my books and my papers. I'm not done writing. And in fact, right now, as I share with you from 2 Timothy 4, we are reaping the benefits of Paul's loneliness. A majority of Paul's writings were written in prison because during a time when he chose, he wasn't going to waste his loneliness. Instead, he was going to make the most of his time. Friends, don't waste your loneliness. Maybe you feel lonely right now. Maybe you feel like your friends have abandoned you. Your spouse has abandoned you. Your coworkers have abandoned you. Maybe you find yourself unemployed and, and I feel abandoned. Don't waste that loneliness. Be productive. Make the most of your time. The last thing... I want to encourage you with is this. Don't withdraw from people. Don't withdraw from people. I mentioned to you, talked to you earlier about Job, who lost everything in one day. And you know when Job's healing began? It began when he began praying for his friends. The Bible says then his health was restored and his possessions were restored. And, and he, he, he was blessed when he he, here's the thing, he could have focused on himself and had a pity party. Instead, he chose to pray for his friends. Find some people that you can invest in when you're lonely. Find some people that you can pray for. Paul, in that prison, facing execution, told Timothy, when you come, bring Mark with you and come soon before winter. He wanted to invest in Timothy. He wanted to invest in Mark. There are people that need you to invest in them. Don't waste your loneliness. Don't waste your loneliness. Friends, listen. God can do great things in your life. He wants to do great things in your life. And it's not just when things are going well. It's easy, right? It's easy when things are going well to try to make a difference and to have a positive mindset. It's easy when things are going well to take care of yourself. It's easy when things are going well to take, to uh, make the most of your time because you're on a high, things are strong. It's easy to be around people when things are going well, but you know what? Some of the best things that God can do in your life and he wants to do in and through you is when things aren't going as well. When you could be down in the dumps, when you could be having a pity party. Choose to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, no one else will. You've got to choose to take care of yourself and make the most of your time and don't withdraw from people. Find people in your life that you can invest in and that you can make a difference. All right, let's talk about the latest and greatest. There's one thing I want you to know about. 
Thank you for listening to the podcast. You're listening to my podcast. You're probably following me on Instagram or Twitter or we're connected on Facebook or LinkedIn, but are you getting my text messages? That's right. I send out regular doses of inspiration and encouragement. All you need to do is get your phone out and text the word Ryan, that's my name, R-Y-A-N, text Ryan to this phone number, 765 247-6321, 765-247-6321. Text the word Ryan to 765-247-6321. I'd love to start sending you a regular dose of inspiration and encouragement right to your phone. Hey, I want to talk to you about a resource that you absolutely must know about. My friend Corey Jones, who is one of the co-hosts of the Kids Matter podcast, if you're a Kidman leader, if you work with kids or families in the church, I hope that you're listening to our Kids Matter podcast. Put a Z in there, K-I-D-Z. Corey, several years ago, told me about Sticker Mule. He said, Ryan, do you get stickers from Sticker Mule? I love them. Sticker Mule, if you go there, go to stickermule.com. They say on their website they have custom stickers that kick butt. Okay, it's not butt, but you get it. I don't want to be censored on the podcast. Custom stickers that kick butt. And here's what I love about it. If you scroll to the bottom of the website, they they always are running some kind of a deal. And I love their deals. Their deals are crazy. Uh, Right now, as I'm recording the podcast, uh, they have a deal where you can get a t-shirt a soft t-shirt with your logo on the front for $9, and that includes shipping. How cheap is that, right? They'll run deals on stickers. They'll run deals on hydro flask kind of stickers, vinyl stickers, on, on regular stickers, on buttons, on keychains, and the deals are always super crazy deals. The first time that you buy something from them, you get on their email list, and they'll start notifying you about their deals I don't know that Sticker Mule ever does a deal that I don't buy something because it's so cheap and the quality of their stuff is so great. So go check out StickerMule.com. You'll find some great deals. And remember, you heard about it right here on the Ryan Frank Podcast. All right, let's wrap up today's podcast with a quote of the week. Tony Robbins once said, The secret to living is giving. The secret to living is giving. Some of the most happy people I know are people that are givers. And you know what? God has given to you and and you want him to keep giving. You need to be a giver. God one day told Abraham back in Genesis 12 that I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. And there's a principle in the Bible, and that is if you want to receive God's blessing and his favor, You need to be a channel where those blessings and that favor flow. So think about the blessings that God's given you. Are you blessing others? What about the healing that God has given you? Have you moved from being a patient to being a physician? Where you know what? God healed me of this problem and I want to help you be healed. What about the influence God has given you? Are you helping others become an influence in their space? What about someone whose child is having a tough time? You know what? Maybe God has helped your son or daughter overcome an addiction. You know what? God wants you to encourage someone else whose son or daughter is facing an addiction. Maybe God has shown you how to launch a company. Are you sharing what God has helped you and taught you? Are you sharing that with someone else? Maybe God has given you financial means and he's blessed you financially. Are you helping other people grow financially? God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing. And the secret to living is giving. It's not just giving away money. It's not just giving away stuff. It's giving what God has put in your head and what God has put in your heart, as well as giving what God's put on your clock, and that's your time, and 
your checkbook, your resources. Be a giver. Some of the most happy people I know are givers. And what a great time to be reminded of the importance of giving than at Christmas season. Friends, thanks for tuning in to today's podcast. I hope that it's been a help and encouragement to you. I'd love to get your feedback on the podcast. Send me a direct message on Twitter, on Instagram, or Facebook, LinkedIn. Love to hear you, hear from you. And remember, if you've not subscribed, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. Let's stay connected between episodes. You can do that by joining my text list. Text Ryan to 247, or I'm sorry, area code 765 247 63 one. Of course, we can also stay connected on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever your favorite social network is. I'm probably there. All of those links can be found at ryanfrank.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time.